Well, hello again. Um, I decided to make a second part of the video because, well, um, looking back, I didn't get the chance to explain a bit what's going on and why uh, this API here called query full process image name W represents the means for a bypass. Um, you see that here it's being, we are being told that we have to go to this API and we have to change it to this particular format, XOR, RA, RAX, RAX, and return. Um, I'll explain now the reason why this is considered a bypass and we'll take um, a quick look at, at the, um, the function we talked about earlier. Uh, while the previous video is loading, let's open this in the debugger. Remember that the process will die now. File, attach, and then go here. And I'm hoping that the heard breakpoint is still there. There we go. And run all the way down to where the enum child windows happens. Press an F, F9 and then well, F2 here, F9 to resume the execution and F9 again to get here to where the breakpoint was originally set. Let's go to this function. And then if you remember, we get here where this API is hit, which does query full process image name W. And if you use ent the enter key to go inside the call, the call will take you to a jump and then enter on the jump and the jump will take you to an API. So let's take a look at what M MSDN has to tell us about query full, what was the name of it? Full process image name, full process image name W. So what this function then is, is, what this function does is to retrieve the full name of the executable image for the specified process, and that I'm assuming include, I'm assuming includes also the path. So that's pretty much uh, what this function does. And if you look at the return value, it says if the function succeeds, the return value is non-zero. If you remember, once we go past this API will see a value in EAX. That's the return value that the MSDN page is talking about. Uh, that's the standard basically for um, return values. You'll see, um, you'll see it in EAX or RAX register. So once we press F8 over this one, just so we don't go inside the, the API, we'll see a one value into RAX, as you can see now. Then the logical text occurs over the RAX value, and if you press F8, you'll see that it goes to this jump here. And now if you take a look at the jump, it pretty much tells us that if this jump succeeds, and I'm showing you this bar here, the jump takes you all the way to the exit of the function. So as long as the return value from that API, which is, um, okay, I'll have to close, whatever, some guy. Um, as long as the um, jump if equal occurs, the detection never takes place. That's basically the interpretation of it because the certificate check never happens the certificate get name doesn't happen and then the compare doesn't happen with cheat engine that's being put here. So in order for us to, so we can um, we can basically modify the process just like Tim mentioned and um, patch it in such a way that uh, once you um, make those modifications and run the, the game uh, the detection never takes place but then you can also make use of the Windows APIs and patch them from the context of the game in such a way that uh, when they do run, the return of the function is something different than what's been expected. So if you go inside here, you see that this API is from kernel base.dll. So what we can do here, for example, let's run another loop, set a breakpoint with F2, do this, and let the uh, with F8 to get to the next line, then press F7, and then press F7 again to go inside the jump, and we're up top here. And if you remember, the page said 
we have to modify it to look like this. Now, if we do it like indicated XOR RX RX, then uh, double click again and press and type RET. So now what happens is the result in RX is zero. The return gets us back here. And now the test on zero will make the jump happen. And then this will exit. So now with the code that we paged, patched in for this query uh, full process image name W, the way the API has been patched right now from a debugger, the detection never takes place. You see that I have cheat engine open and when I resume you won't see any any error message anymore. And you'll see that the game actually opens. Hopefully. Come on. I have no idea where the game doesn't start, but anyway. That's pretty much how you can how you can patch the, the API. Um, okay, let's try to do this. I'm just going to close it. I'm just going to let it run. Close this one, just so it, it's not detected. Okay, so the game is about to start. Okay. The window is on screen. What we want to do now is attach to the process and then remove all of the breakpoints, including this one that we set up earlier, the harder one. And with the game uh, paused, we can go to this API. Copy, paste here. You can see that the debug detects it already. And then press enter on this jump and XOR RX RX. There is a bit of a lag because again the, the, the game process is paused and you'll see the, the debugger lagging. And then here return and then resume the game process. So the game runs. Blah blah blah, we get main menu, we're now in the game, and since we patched this API to return zero all the time, so that the jump, uh, well it's not there anymore because I I removed the, the harder breakpoint, so I cannot get to the function, I don't remember it exactly, but anyway, now you can just, you know, open cheat engine, and nothing happens, as you can see. But, if we restore this code, and the way to restore it is to do control backspace, well, there we go, boom. So that's that. Now I've also explained how to use that particular API query full process image name W and patch it according to uh, this information here in uh, my post in such a way that it doesn't detect cheat engine. So you have a ton of methods uh, at your disposal in order to, to get past this, uh, let's say, easy uh, anti-cheat engine uh, uh, method. And well, I hope you enjoyed it. Sambi Bye.